I want to bring in meteorologist Kit Thomas and Kit talk about some busy weather happening right now in the great state of Nebraska. Yeah, and it's October, so we're starting mm -hmm. to get into that secondary severe weather season, especially across the central plains here. I know, and that this is an interesting time of the year because then we can start to get some snow, which we are getting just nearby. Yeah, a very fall like pattern here across the central US. Let's dive into the radar though, as we do have a confirmed tornado warning just south of the Kearney area here into Kearney County, as well as uh, just south of there into Franklin County. See there on the loop. So we'll get a pause on the radar here. Confirmed tornado warning means it has been observed. Now, keeping an eye on it, there might also be some one inch diameter hail here just to the southeast of the Mendel area and this storm eventually could make its way into Adams County around the Hastings area. So we've got to keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, Kearney, we've seen some very heavy rain here in southern parts of Buffalo County. Even some street flooding was reported recently. This line of storms is going to be making its way towards the, uh, uh, the Grand Island Hastings area within the next hour probably. So Keep uh, your phone nearby so you can make sure you've got uh, all of those alerts coming in as these storms progress through the area. As we look towards the southeast from here, north of Concordia, Kansas, there moving sort of into Republic County, Kansas, we're starting to see a line of thunderstorms develop here right along a dry line. So that's just this little bit of outflow boundary you can see right there on the radar. Might see some more of these thunderstorms get a little more potent, possibly needing an expansion of the tornado watch that we have in this area. So we can take a look at that tornado watch until 7 p.m. tonight. That's, of course, central time. We see uh, all the way up from Holt County down towards Graham and Mitchell counties in Kansas. So I'll uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Again, like I said, Lincoln may be added on. We'll have to see the uh, Storm Prediction Center has released a discussion about this zone where we might see that expansion. So we'll keep an eye on that here at Weather Nation for the next couple of hours. Looking at the last three hours, we've had this low pressure system that's developed across the high plains here, it's starting to kick out and it's gonna move east over the next couple of days. It's bringing with it some pretty heavy rain. Remember how I said Kearney had some street flooding? Some of the more urban areas and maybe some fields, especially if they've already been harvested, might see a little bit of some aerial flooding here over the next couple of days, though it's going to move more towards the Chicagoland area, eastern Iowa as well. So there's the severe weather risk for the day today. Colby, Kansas, pretty much on the back side of it at this point, but Sioux City down to Maryville, Kansas City, and even into the Tulsa area could see some storms developing severe characteristics today. And then tomorrow, Cedar Falls, Cedar Rapids, the Des Moines area through the Quad Cities, northwestern parts of, of uh, Missouri there, northeastern I should say, and northwestern Illinois as well. Tornado threat is greater today, but tomorrow it still is present there. Des Moines, the I-80 corridor out to the Davenport area and northern Missouri as well. We'll take you through the forecast here. We've got a line of thunderstorms still developing right there on that front. And notice there in the panhandle of Nebraska, a little bit of snow on the way. Like I said, a very fall-like pattern. As we get into Friday morning, we've got some heavy rain around the Quad Cities, Iowa City up to uh, the Waterloo area. And then eventually by one o'clock, we've got those storms possibly around the Chicagoland area. So we'll have to keep an eye on that through the whole day. And then we have the center of the low coming in in the afternoon, possibly a second set of thunderstorms developing right there, Cedar Rapids to the Quad Cities along this front. We'll of course have more of those details throughout the hour, but up next is your East Regional Forecast. Continuing with severe weather coverage right here on Weather Nation at this five o'clock central time hour. So we do have a tornado warning active in Hall County, Nebraska, just to the southwest from Grand Island. Now, presently we've lost the debris signature that briefly was there. Just in the last 15 minutes, we've seen a confirmed tornado possibly completely spin out. So that's some good news, but we do still have that uh, warning presently on our system. I want to uh, bring you uh, to your attention right now. Now, this is just to the southwest from Donovan there, down uh, 281. It crossed over Rosedale Road earlier, and I want to show you the velocity signature. This was 15 minutes ago, just outside of the Prosser area. This is the first scan we had of a very uh, brief couplet. Now, a couplet is what we call uh, the tornado vortex signature on radar, where we have that inbound and outbound uh, pixel of the wind velocity. So this would be uh, inbound towards the Blue Hill radar site, and that would be outbound. So there we have the rotation signature 
Then it just crosses into Hall County as it gets that warning issued, confirmed warning, and then it completely dissipates, at least on visual uh, for the radar. But notice that the box is still blinking pink. That indicates that it is a confirmed tornado, so it can still be on the ground even if the subtlety isn't getting picked up by the velocity signature that it looks like that has just been allowed to expire. Now here's the debris signature. This is what is picking up the, uh, what the tornado is picking up. Notice there just before, this is 541, just before we had that uh, tornado forming, then 544 right there. We've got this dip in the colors down into the blues there. That's right where we had that first couplet on radar. So that is the debris getting picked up. Now, this can sometimes mean we've seen damage to homes, to buildings, to businesses. But here, uh, this, is, this is a very rural area. I'm fairly familiar with uh, this region. This is probably a lot of corn stalks, dust, rocks, possibly uh, some buildings could have been impacted by this. So we always want to treat a tornado warning seriously, but if we clear that off, we go to that next frame, you can see that uh, debris signature dropped even further. So uh, good timing with the National Weather Service and Hastings there, getting that warning out very quickly. Now we're seeing everything beginning to dissipate with that particular system. Grand Island, you're starting to see some heavier rainfall coming through. Cairo, Nebraska, just up Highway 2, you've got some very heavy rainfall as well. Not Severe, although this did have a severe thunderstorm warning on it back when it was still in parts of Buffalo County. So uh, that uh, line is beginning to weaken just a little bit. I want to take you to the visible satellite imagery here, though. This is showing that we've still got a little bit of clear air out in front of this line. And that clear air means we're still getting a little bit of sunshine in there a little bit of instability still present for these storms to develop and possibly still more tornadic uh, thunderstorms. So anywhere from Merrick County through Howard County, Clay County, and that we, and we could see a potential for uh, some more uh, tornadic developments within this area. Of course, we do have a tornado watch that has been expanded just a little bit into Polk down to Thayer County right there, just east of uh, the uh, Tri-Cities area of Nebraska. So we still want to be cautious of the storms that are rolling through this area. Could still see a little bit of tornadic development, like I said, with that clear air out ahead of the line. We do have another line that's been developing down towards the Salina, Kansas area, a warm front extending through the I-80 corridor. And it's gonna continue to follow sort of right where that warm front is. For the rest of today, we still have the chance for some excessive rainfall, possibly some flooding, and even into our day Friday, across northern Illinois. So from Des Moines, Cedar Falls, the uh, Quad Cities area, Peoria, northeastern Missouri, you could see some severe thunderstorms tomorrow. Tornado threat is present, though not as significant as today, with a 5% today, 2% for tomorrow. As we look through the forecast here, we've got more of those thunderstorms progressing. Passing that I-35 corridor, 6 a.m., we've got heavy rainfall coming through the Missouri Valley, uh, excuse me, the Mississippi River Valley, and into parts of Missouri as well. And then we'll see that moving on into the Chicago lands. Now, we might see another burst of convection in the evening right along that cold front, so we could have two waves of thunderstorms passing here through the upper Midwest, and then things begin to quiet down as we head into Saturday. Heavier rainfall from uh, parts of northern Nebraska all the way through South Dakota, Minnesota, and on into parts of Wisconsin as well. I'm going to bring in my colleague, meteorologist Kara James now. We have had a little more severe weather down in Florida today. 